Hello students, welcome back to our class. In the previous module, we discussed about triangles and uh, what are different types of triangles based on sides and we discussed about them. Now we are going to discuss about types of triangles based on angles. So what is the very first triangle based on angles? The very first triangle is acute angled triangle, acute angled triangle. So, when a triangle is said to be acute angled triangle, once you observe the name acute angled triangle, acute angle means how much? The angle measurement should be more than 0 degrees and less than 90 degrees. So, more than 0 and less than 90, if you consider a triangle, in our grade, uh, in our 6th chapter, we discussed about uh, angle sum property of a triangle, sum of all the three angles of uh, triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So, you can divide that 180 degrees into three parts such that each part can be an acute angle, right? Each part can be an acute angle. So, what do you mean by acute angle triangle here? In a triangle, if every single angle, I repeat, every single angle of a triangle is acute angle, then only the triangle is said to be acute angle the triangle. Did you get my point? Because there is a possibility that every single angle of a triangle can be acute angle. That is why the triangle is named as specially an acute angle triangle. So, here if you take one triangle like this, in this triangle, for example, if this angle is equal to 89 degrees and this angle is equal to some 11 degrees, what is 89 plus 11? 89 plus 11 is equal to 100. And then what about this angle? This angle is going to be 80 degrees. Once you see, all the three angles are acute angles. So, that is why this triangle is said to be acute angled triangle, right? And see, for example, this is 89, this is 11 and this is 80. You are taking every single angle of a triangle is acute. Then only the triangle is said to be an acute angled triangle. And suppose if my triangle is... 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. Yes, this triangle is also an acute angle triangle because all the three angles of this triangle are equal. Of course, all the three angles of the triangle are acute angles. See here our point is whether all the three angles are acute angles or not. Whether they are equal or not, that does not matter. We can discuss about that later. So, here this triangle is basically what kind of triangle? This is an equilateral triangle. And now we discussed about acute angle triangle. So, what do you mean by that? Every equilateral triangle is acute. Every equilateral triangle is acute. This is one of the best example for e acute angle triangle, right? Hope you understand. So, I repeat, acute angle triangle means if every single angle of a triangle is acute angle, then it is said to be an acute angle triangle, right? Coming to the second triangle, what is the second triangle? Second one is right angled triangle, right angled triangle. So, what do you mean by right angled triangle? See here, right angled triangle means how many number of right angles that can be possible in a, tri in a triangle? Right angle means 90 degrees. So, 90 degrees means definitely the lines should be perpendicular. Okay, fine. This is one line segment, this is one more line segment, we can call them as sides of the triangle, right? So, this is 90 degrees. If this is 90, we already used two sides. We need one more side to form a triangle. So, how is that possible to draw one more side? Definitely, you will have to join these two. Otherwise, you cannot form any triangle. Suppose, if you want to take one more 90 degrees here, then the side would be this. If this is 90 degrees, then what do you call these two lines? Yes, these two lines are said to be parallel lines according to transversal properties of parallel lines, right? This is 90, this is 90. These two angles sum is equal to 180 so that they are co-interior angles. Since these two are co-interior angles, these two lines must be parallel lines. If these two are parallel, will they intersect at any point? Not at all. So, there is an open polygon formed. But what we want? We want a triangle. So, to form a triangle, there must be only one right angle exist. There is only one right angle possible in a triangle. So, by this we can understand one thing that if one angle of a triangle, 
one angle of a triangle is 90 degrees, then the triangle is said to be a right angled triangle, because there is only one right angle possible in a triangle, why because by this right. So, right angle triangle is nothing but if one of the angles of a triangle is right angle, it could be either here or it could be either here. See, this is also one right angle triangle. Otherwise, this is also one right angle triangle, right. So, all these triangles are right angle triangles. In a right angle triangle, especially because you mostly deal with right angle triangles in our higher studies, in any right angle triangle, for example, I am taking a right angle triangle here, okay. In any right angle triangle A, B, C, this is what the longest side of the right angle triangle, okay. The longest side of the right angle triangle, otherwise the side which is exactly opposite to the right vertex, right vertex means where the right angle is located, that particular vertex is said to be a right vertex, okay. So, this is the right vertex and this is the side opposite to the right vertex the side which is opposite to the right vertex otherwise the longest side of right angle triangle is named as hypotenuse what do you call that hypotenuse and what about the other two sides other two sides are almost always perpendicular sides the perpendicular sides of a right angle triangle are said to be legs this is a special name you will have to remember they are said to be legs. So, this is leg 1 and this is leg 2. So, legs are nothing but the perpendicular sides of right angle triangle. These are some interesting names that is it nothing more than that, okay. So, this is about right angle triangle and of course, uh, if one of the angles is right angle, then what about the other two angles of the triangle? Other two angles must be, if one angle is already 90 degrees, according to angle some property of a triangle, other two angles sum is equal to 90 degrees. If other two angles sum is equal to 90 degrees, if the sum of two angles is equal to 90 degrees, then what do you call those two angles? We already discussed in lines and angles chapter. Yes, they are called complementary angles. So, that in any right angle triangle other than 90 degrees, other than right angle, the other two angles are definitely complementary angles. because the sum of these two angles is equal to 90 degrees, please do remember that. And we have very important and very familiar prominent theorem also defined on right angle triangle. What is that? Pythagoras theorem. Yes, what is Pythagoras theorem? In a right angle triangle, the square of hypotenuse is equal to sum of squares of other two sides. Means, in triangle ABC, if angle ABC is equal to 90 degrees, then a c square is equal to a b square plus b c square that is what is Pythagoras theorem, right. So, we discuss all these things later. This is about the second triangle that is right angled triangle. What is third triangle? Third triangle is obtuse angled triangle. This is one of the interesting triangle, okay. So, what is this obtuse angled triangle is all about? Obtuse angled triangle. See, as like acute angle triangle, there is a possibility that all the three angles can be acute angles, that is why the triangle is said to be acute angle triangle. But there is a only one possibility that one of the angles of a triangle is 90 degrees, that is why the triangle is said to be right angle triangle. What about obtuse angle triangle? Obtuse angle means it should be more than 90 degrees, right? So, more than 90 degrees means, for example, this is one of my rays, like the sides and I am forming one angle is equal to obtuse angle. If one angle equal to obtuse angle means generally it is right angle, right? So, this is right angle. So, definitely my side should be more than that. So, this entire angle is equal to more than one, more than 90 degrees. So, it is an obtuse angle. If it is obtuse angle and this is one of the sides and this is one of the sides, I can take one more side because it is a triangle. So, how can I take one more side? definitely by joining these two vertices. So, when I join these two vertices, this is only the triangle formed. It means, I can form only one right angle as well as only one obtuse angle in one of the triangles. I cannot take more than one right angle, 
as well as I cannot take more than one obtuse angle in any triangle. So, as like right angle triangle, if one of the angles of a triangle is more than 90 degrees or simply if one of the angles of a triangle is an obtuse angle, then that triangle is said to be obtuse angled triangle. If one of the angles of a triangle is more than 90 degrees, then the triangle is said to be obtuse angled triangle. So, this is obtuse angle triangle. Where is that obtuse angle located? Here it is obtuse angle. So, in triangle ABC, angle BAC is more than 90 degrees. That is why it is obtuse angle triangle. And I can draw one more obtuse angle triangle like this. See, there is some special property or there are some special properties of obtuse angle triangle. Those special properties are in this triangle, if you consider this AC as the base, then the angles associated with the base are said to be base angles and the angle opposite to the base is said to be vertical angle. So, here one of the base angles is an obtuse angle. I am drawing one more obtuse angle triangle other the, uh, and, and moreover one more base angle is obtuse angle. For example, this is one more obtuse angle triangle. right? So, in this triangle this is obtuse angle more than 90 degrees. Let this triangle be triangle PQR. I can draw one more obtuse angle triangle which is a vertical angle. So, the vertical angle is more than 90 degrees. So, here this is the angle more than 90 degrees. See here in these three triangles, if you consider this RQ as the base, otherwise AC as the base, how do you draw a perpendicular from its opposite vertex? See here this RQ is the base. How do we draw perpendicular from its opposite vertex P on to the base RQ? So, if you draw any line from P on to RQ through inside the triangle, definitely it is not a perpendicular. Perpendicular means the shortest distance that should be drawn. So, then how do you draw shortest distance from P on to RQ? Then definitely you need to produce that side towards that vertex and then you will have to draw perpendicular from P on to that side produced. Then this perpendicular can be considered as altitude drawn on to this base RQ. So, if this is the base, then this is the perpendicular drawn on to that base for this particular obtuse angle triangle. Similarly, here also. See here, if you consider AC as the base, then definitely you will have to produce that CA and then you will have to draw perpendicular from here. So, then only this can be considered as altitude drawn on to this base. But if the triangle is obtuse angle and obtuse angle is a vertical angle, then it is very much easier to draw perpendicular because from here you can draw perpendicular like this. So, here what did you observe here in this three cases, these two are one case and this is the other case. What is this particular case here? If your obtuse angle is one of the base angles, if your obtuse angle is one of the base angles, then its altitude lie outside the triangle. I repeat, if one of the obtuse angle obtuse angle of your obtuse angle triangle is one of the base angles. If your obtuse angle is one of the base angles, then the altitude lie outside the triangle. But if the obtuse angle is a vertical angle, then its altitude lie inside the triangle. So, this is what you need to understand because this is very, very important and technical point that you need to understand and because we are going to apply this concept in our further studies uh, in concepts called triangles in our tri uh, grade 10 as well as in grade 9 in order to uh, find out some important points, then definitely we need to apply this. So, that is why you need a clear cut idea on this concept of obtuse angle triangle. right?
So this is about obtuse angle triangle. If one of the angles of a triangle is obtuse angle, then the triangle is said to be obtuse angled triangle. And coming to the last triangle, what is that last one? Which is based on their sides as well as angles. What do you call the triangle? Right angled isosceles triangle. Right angled isosceles triangle. So, what is this right angled isosceles triangle? See, in the name itself, you can see that it should be right angled as well as it should be isosceles. Let me draw one triangle, it should be a right angled triangle. In this right angled triangle A, B, C right angled at B, this is the right angle. Obviously, this is called the longest side of a right angle triangle. So, the longest side cannot be equal to any one of the other two perpendicular sides. So, then where is the possibility? The possibility for this isosceles property is the other two perpendicular sides only equal. So, in a triangle, one of the angles is right angle and both the perpendicular sides are equal then the triangle is said to be right angled isosceles triangle. This is a standard triangle and uh, the properties will not be changed as like our equilateral triangle. In isosceles triangle, we know about the fixed angles of the other two acute angles. One of the angles is already 90 degrees and these two sides are equal. According to the properties of isosceles triangle, these two angles also equal. If one angle is 90, other two angles are complementary and both of them are equal, then what are those two angles? You can easily guess both of them are each 45 degrees. So, 45 degrees and 45 degrees. Therefore, these are the standard results for a right angled isosceles triangle. Please do remember that. In right angled isosceles triangle, one of the angles is right angle and the other two perpendicular sides are equal and two acute angles two acute angles measures are each 45 degrees. And one of the very important thing here is when you apply Pythagoras theorem to this particular triangle, according to Pythagoras theorem, hypotenuse square is equal to side square plus side square. So, here hypotenuse is equal to AC square equal to AB square plus BC square, AB square plus BC square. But here AB and BC both are equal, I am taking AB square only. So, that AB square plus AB square, AB square plus AB square is equal to 2AB square. So, that AC square is equal to 2AB square, therefore AC is equal to what? Square root to 2AB square. What is square root 2AB square? AC is equal to square root 2 times AB. What is this AC is equal to square root 2 times AB? It means hypotenuse is equal to root 2 times to its side hypotenuse equal to root 2 times to its perpendicular side. The same concept is applicable in order to find the diagonal of a square also. That is why I am just insisting to remember this hypotenuse of right angled isosceles triangle is equal to root 2 times to its one of the perpendicular sides. So, this is all about our triangles based on their sides as well as based on their angles as well as their properties. Hope you enjoyed the class and understand. Thank you.